Let's talk about setting our goals. Do you think it's important to set a goal or it's useless or what do you think? Tell me, what's your opinion? Chris? I think it's important to set a goal so, so that you can aim higher. Exactly. Chris Pien. It's important to set personal goals mm -hmm. so that you're able to know whether you are achieving anything or by the set time by you mm -hmm. or you're not. Yeah, it's important because without having a goal in anything we're doing rather in life, then I think we might not go anywhere. I agree. I agree. Imagine you're going to play a football game, a soccer game, right? And you enter the field, this huge piece of grass land, you know, green, with all these white lines on it, and 20,000 people watching there, yeah, shouting, there they come. 11 people in a uniform, another 11 people in another uniform, running up the field, the referee there, and then they start, bang, running to the, to the end of the field. And then you are there, and you want to kick the ball, and then there is no goal. So what do you do? You turn around, run to the other side. Maybe it's someone is there, something is there, you know? So you come there, and there is nothing. So what can you do? You can play some football by just, you know, kicking around this ball and 22 players and having some fun. But these 20,000 20, people won't be happy because they want to see a game. They want to see competition. They want to see results. So if there are no goals, there are no results, right? So it's important to have a goal in life, in school, in education, in work, in your relationship, in your family, whatever it will be. But there is always a goal. Now we know the turn right. And we know that we limit ourselves, or we tend to limit ourselves. We have to be careful by setting this goal, isn't it? Because we might set a goal somewhere there, although we know that we might reach the goal somewhere there. Right? So aim high, as you said, Chris, is very, very important. Do we know SMART, S-M-A-R-T? SMART, we know it? Let me write it down. These letters, SMART, what do they mean? Specific. Specific, that's the first one, okay. Being specific in setting your goal, what could that mean? Let's take an example. Um, you're in school, you're on maybe Tangaza College, and then you want to finish the whole school. So that's the goal. What's important then? You want to finish your school uh, education uh, by the end of whatever time. But now you are also saying the specific place in yes. which you are going to actually learn it, and exactly. nowhere else. So you're giving specification. Yes, that's already one specification, Tangaza. And then you could specify on what am I going to do there, social ministry or whatever, you know? That's one step further. It's more specific. If you keep going on and on and on, you are visualizing your goal by doing that. The more you visualize your goal, the more likely it is to reach that goal, okay? So making it specific is very, very important. The M is for? Whoop, measure. Measurable. Sorry for the mess. What do we mean by measurable? How can we make a goal measurable? Let's uh, say you're going to start a car repair shop. If you want it specific, you could say, I'm going to repair second-hand cars and cars uh, who just pass by and go in because they say, I have a problem, okay? Measurable would mean this company would be, I don't know, maybe as big as this room here, or maybe double of that, and I would be, there would be about four employees, and I would do about four cars in an hour, I don't know, something like that, but make it measurable. This is also about visualizing, it's getting it more and more clear what your goal is. Okay, A is for? 
achievable. <coughs> achievable. I think this is a tricky one because we don't really know what is achievable, is it? I mean, my, I'm 45 years, I never played basketball. If I would set a goal that I would be playing in the NBA in the United States within three years, and one meter, 68 centimeters, that's not really achievable, I think. It also hits to the next one, which means realistic. So, what is realistic? I don't think the example I gave would be realistic. Is it? It's realistic? No, it's not realistic, exactly. But on the other hand, there could have been a guy, a little boy, years ago in primary school, and maybe the teacher asked, Bill, what do you want to be when you grow up? And maybe Bill had said, I'm going to be the richest man in the world. And I'm going to do something with computers. And about 95% of all the computers, they're they use my system. Could be that this little guy uh, who said that turned out to be the guy who made Microsoft and became the richest man in the world. I don't know if that's realistic, all right? I mean, probably the teacher then said, that's not realistic. So what's realistic? I don't know, that could be tricky. Maybe what is not realistic there is being the wealthiest man in the world. Because the, that is oh, yeah. relative. Yes, of course. I, I agree. I agree. It's just, you know, as an example, I mean, he has been the richest guy in the world for a long time, isn't it? Something realistic would be to cover a distance of 10,000 kilometers using your car. Mm -hmm. Now, when you start from point zero to 10,000, you got something realistic. Yes, it's realistic, it's achievable, and it's also measurable. And T is for time. All right. It's always important to put a time frame around the goal. So many people say, oh, you know, when I have my business and I earn enough money, then I'm going to buy this house or I'm going to make this trip to, I don't know where. But when are you gonna do that? I want to start my own business. Okay, good, yeah, one, one day I will. One day, when is that one day? It's today, tomorrow, in 10 years, you know? So put a time frame around it makes it more likely you're really going to reach that goal. Okay? Good. Shall we do a little exercise? Okay. Can we get up and stand in a circle here? <laughs> Let me tell you what we're going to do. This is an apple, of course, right? We know this thing. So what we're going to do is this. I am going to throw, very carefully, this apple to somebody in this circle. Okay, then this person is going to throw this apple to somebody else, and somebody else, and somebody else, and so on, and so on. Everybody is going to have this apple once. So in the end, it will come back here again. Right? So let's say I throw it to Chris, Chris throws to uh, Ramadan, Ramadan, Elisabetta, and so on. And in the end, it ends here. Is that clear? I think that's easy, isn't it? Can we make the circle a little bit bigger? Just a little bit, as far as we can. Yeah, okay, good, great, 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 great. Good, so, clear? Any questions? We know what we're gonna do? Do we throw it with strength? No, 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 <laughs> carefully, carefully, <laughs> carefully, just carefully. That's one rule, if the apple drops on the floor, we have to start all over again. Okay? All right? So we're not going to do like this, but just carefully like this, okay? We need a big apple. You need a big apple? Yeah. <laughs> this is okay. <laughs> Wait, there is a brick here. If that's, <laughs> would that help? <laughs> Apple will do. Here we go. Paul. Uh, 
Hi, excuse me. Yes, that's fine. <laughs> Second, Second time. time. <laughs> okay. So how can we solve this? I mean, that's this is confusing, of course. I don't know who was the first or second time. So how, what, what, what can we do? Concentrate. Concentrate. Okay, that's one. Plan. Plan. What else? Strategy. Strategy. What could we do? Just easy. Just keep it simple. What could we do? I mean, we could stand like this. That means I have to catch an apple. And if you have had it already, you just do like this. Okay? Concentrate. Everything is going well. 
Okay, let's see how much we can do if we really focus. Here we go. Concentrate. Everybody ready? tells you a lot about what is important if you want to reach your goals. Focus, concentration, cooperation, making it structurized, which is important too, right? Because in the first run it was very confusing. The second one was confusing too, until we set some structure in there. Now the, way, the reason we do it this way is because this is experiential learning. You learn by doing. If you do this with a group of people, they learn step by step just by doing this. And then they experience, okay, so I have to structurize, I have to make arrangements, I have to make agreements, I have to focus, and blah, 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 the whole, the whole list, okay? Just let them experience what happens. I could tell it from the start, if you do this, you have to do that, you have to do so and so and so. It wouldn't be so fun anymore, okay? And you don't learn that much from it. I realize that uh, beside focusing, you know, we were a team. Mm -hmm. And in uh, playing your best, 
everybody was devising his or her own ways on how to make herself relevant mm -hmm. that And that's how uh, Nelly also said, my strategy, the strategy I'm using is focused on two people. Mm -hmm. The one bringing and the one throwing to. Mm -hmm. And it could be that others had already devised their own ways on how they can keep the ball moving on and on. Mm -hmm. I think that was the most interesting part of the work. <coughs> But you devise your own way to fit and to, to, to make sure that the goal of the whole team is achieved. Okay. So actually everybody makes his own strategy? Yeah. Which fits in the team? Yes. This is social entrepreneurship. John? Yeah. So the other thing that also learned is that uh, if one of the members does not uh, concentrate, you all miss. So you not achieve what you wanted to achieve and all that. Yes. So the issue of teamwork is very, very important not only for you to achieve what you want to achieve. Absolutely, absolutely agree, Rafael. I come to you, John. Yes. The thing I have realized from this exercise is that uh, when you bring a project which is acceptable, very many people will participate. Mm -hmm. For example, you brought stones, very many people will not uh, actually accept it too. Wonderful. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. It's true. They will hear the stones. I don't know the season. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Wonderful, thank you Rafa for that. Because if you want a team to do something, it should be accepted by every single member of the team. Yes. If it's not, it won't work. If I would have taken that break, you'd have said, no, I'm not in. I'm out of this team. But what happened? Not for me. John. Uh, I'm thinking as well that, uh, except for what uh, anyone has mentioned, I, I, I was thinking of uh, something like creativity. Regardless of uh, us being in a team, we don't have to sit down probably in a meeting and, uh, and, 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 and start discussing these issues. Each individual has to be created in their own way mm -hmm. that will fit in the, in the team. Exactly. So that we have to be created so that we move on. Yes. This is an, an item which we are going to talk about uh, further on in the training, which is very important about, uh, about qualities somebody has you know, and mixing those and things like that. We're going to come back on that one. It's very interesting. Paul. There are circumstances that are beyond our control, but if you are aware of them, then you can redesign. I mean, like I throw the ball and it meets another one on the way. Mm -hmm. uh, it wasn't planned that way. Mm -hmm. And so it, the country is the destination and everything is, is, is fell apart. So you need to be aware of that circumstances and then you can always try and avoid them as much as possible. Mm -hmm. That's true. Yeah. Thank you. Wonderful. So you see, it's a very simple game, actually, right? But there is a lot behind it, right? That's what I said in the start. If we do games, there is always a message inside. You could do this as a game. Say, oh, let's stand in a circle and throw some balls. Yeah, fun. That's OK. Let's go on. Let's do something else. But if you can use it this way, it clears up. It tells a lot to the students you work with. All right? Okay. Only. We first identify a common goal. Mm -hmm. Because we are different people, so our approaches were different mm -hmm. towards the common goal. Yes. But because we all focused on the common goal we had, then we were able to come up with a strategy where we all applied our different approaches, but we still met the common goal. Mm -hmm. So that means that if you're working in a team, in a group, everybody should be aware of what is the goal, what are we doing now, and why are we doing this. If everybody is lined up, you can reach that goal. If there are some people who are not uh, aware of what we're heading for, you won't get there. 